Okay, welcome to this episode of the Athletic Fitness and Nutrition Podcast. My name is Paul Burgess, and I'm here today with, without a doubt, the biggest guy who has ever been on the podcast, bar none, and he has dieted over the last few months, so he's now only 23 stone six. His name's Dave Crossland. Dave, welcome to the show, mate. Thank you. Hello. It's good to have you on. Um, and the reason I wanted Dave on is because I have done some work with him in the past for some of my clients. And he is a specialist when it comes to performance enhancing drugs and also image enhancing drugs. Um, very well known throughout the industry. A lot of people work with him. Um, and he's got a great back story to tell, but also just launched a really, really good uh, website full of resources that you just can't get anywhere else. And uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about that a bit today. So... Dave, let's get a bit of background about you, um, the, the the shortened version, because I know there's an awful lot that's been going on. But but tell us tell us more about you. Uh, I'm uh, 44, 45 next month. Married, couple of kids. Um, basically, I started lifting when I was 15, 16. I was a fat kid, played rugby at school, and I wasn't particularly strong. Uh, I. Uh, probably say yeah I had confidence issues based around my image got into the training uh, really got into the training fell in love with it very very quickly started in the, in the cellar at home with a couple of weights with my brothers uh, and very shortly progressed to a local gym and staunch natural up until I was 19 mistook weight for size and at 19 I was 23 and a half stone fat git still strong uh, I mean, as a 19-year-old natural, I was repping a thousand pound on the leg press, full range. You know, not these half rep shy that you see everybody do these days. Uh, and I decided to diet for a show. Right. Now, I started my diet on bank holiday. Well, the Tuesday after bank holiday, Easter Monday, because I wanted to be Easter eggs. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, show day, I was 14 stone three. Wow. It killed me. It, yeah. it really did. I was I was a mess. Every of the worst symptoms that you ever get when dieting for a competition. I didn't know where I was. Emotional roller coaster. Everything. And then I just that burnt out. I didn't train for a couple of months. I got back to training, and I just I felt that the natural route had at that point. I mean, bear in mind we're going back over twenty years, twenty five years. That there was there wasn't really much of an offering. There wasn't much progression. So I eventually turned to the dark side. I was a student at the time, and I started my cycle when I broke up from college. So I started in the uh, July. When I returned to the college in September, I was 19 stone with a full set of abs. Wow. Um, I progressed up to 24 stone, just over. Uh, strong, not bad condition, uh, and I was so focused. Everything was like, I'm going to turn pro. This is what I'm going to do. This is my career. And I had a little niggle in my left pec. Local gym opened. Uh, the guy that opened the gym was a guy called Billy Payne. Those that have been around in the bodybuilding scene for a while will remember Billy and his stage battles with Mick Theo. Yeah. Billy was a good friend of Dorian. Dorian was at the opening. I was introduced to Dorian by Kev Taylor, another well-known name in the bodybuilding circles, middleweight lightweight champion several times. And Kev had always sort of guided me when it came to training. Uh, he helped me get ready for that first diet. He chatted to Dorian, introduced me, and then Dorian had basically told Kev that if I could deliver the goods when it came to condition, because I was currently dieting for the Leeds qualifier, that I had to go down to Birmingham and see him, and we'd have talked about me going all the way. So obviously, as a, an, an amateur wanting that pro status, this was like the biggest boost you could ever get. Yeah. Went back into the gym like a man possessed, and subsequently cleanly tore off my left pec, both attachments. Uh, mm. Unfortunately, inexperience on my part and NHS being what it was back then, they refused to reattach. Um, I had lots of other things going on at the time. I had a growing business. Uh, I had relationship issues and various other bits and bats, and I sank into a bit of a depression, drifted away from training, and the result was a 28 stone of fat. So how, years later, this is. How long did that take? Um... I would have been at that sort of weight by about 2000, 2001. Okay. And did you find that that weight was coming on because you were using the food as some sort of comfort because of the way you were feeling? 
not particularly. I, I, there was an element of comfort eating, but there was also an element of lifestyle. I was on the road a lot, and I was basically living out of um, takeaways and, right. and snack vans and stuff like that, you know. And, and I'd, I'd literally drive up the motorway, and I might do a hundred miles, but stop at three services and eat three times on the way up because I did. I, I was still had the appetite I had from being twenty-four, still yeah. training. Um, I had a near death experience. Well, I died. I was crushed by a truck in Canada. Uh, paramedics brought me back, and that was a, a, a very big like, what the mm-hmm. f are you doing with your life? You need to sort this shit out. And that wasn't just with me in a health point of view. This was also me from a business point of view, from a relationship point of view. I, I had a lot of shit going on, needed sorting. Uh, and so slowly, I started to work through it. And one of those things was dieting. I died down to nineteen naturally. And then eventually I went back on, um, started cycling. I was looking for strong land. Went back up to 27 stone, and I was pretty powerful with rowing movements, pretty powerful with shoulder movements, uh, but I had a weak grip, and I just could not win with a deadlift. 300 key was the biggest I ever did, and, and a bloke at 28 stone, that is nowhere near the ballpark in what you need to be. Mm. And then I got chatting to Alvin Small, me, me and Alvin are yeah. friends, and he was like, compete, compete, compete. And I had just written it off that I could because of the pet set. He eventually talked me into it, so I started dieting, and just over two years later, I was 11% of 306 pounds. Wow. Aiming to do a British qualifier. I was a year over my schedule of when I was planning to compete, but it took that long. Yeah. Um, and I, I just hit a brick wall. I, I started to struggle. Uh, now, uh, conditioning wasn't there. Uh, in fact, condition was varying massively, which looking back, I now know why, but at the time, I didn't understand. And I just got burnt out and I got demoralized. Now, at the time, I was sponsored by SSN, and we were discussing doing my next off-season live with open talk about drug use and everything else. Now, at this point, I was always start, already starting to get into harm reduction with regards to steroid use. Yeah. I was always doing some work with local needle exchange. We put steroid awareness nights on. Because when I came back to usage, I found the world of usage had massively changed. What I left was very few guys using. Everyone looked like they used. And if you wanted to use, you almost served an apprenticeship. You weren't given access to drugs. You were given a, a bottle of D-balls. So that's all you're getting. Hmm. And once you proved your worth, you might go on to test and a bit of Decker, but you weren't getting all the tremble on, you weren't getting all the growth, you weren't getting all the insulin because the dealer in the gym almost made you serve an apprenticeship. I came back to a world of 12 stone kids, taking trend, oxys, hammering growth, hammering T3s, and it was like, what the fuck yes. has happened? So I started getting right involved in the arm reduction. Anyway. So I thought that this project of showing everything going live, if I did it honestly and openly, it could be a really good educational tool because I could show the bad sides, you know, the, 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 the struggles that can come with using the drugs, both emotionally and physically. <coughs> anyway, um, SSN shared with the idea. Uh, they thought it wasn't going to be productive, even though the UK guy was well up for it. Um, so I said, you know what, respectively, I resigned my... Uh, sponsorship and I'll do it myself I was also burnt out with the competing so I pulled out of doing the show and started on a project to see how big I could get and that's what spawned Under Construction 1 and Under Construction 2 yeah and there that's two videos that are available to download and correct me if I'm wrong but the goal was to get over 400 pounds not initially initially the goal was just to see how big I could get right so, but when I got to the end of the first one, I was sitting at 365 pound and when the water came off, to be fair, I didn't have bad condition for the weight. Um, and I started thinking, you know what, could I hit 400? Now, 400 always been a number in the back of my head from whenever I heard that Greg Kovacs hit 400 in the off season. Now, I didn't aspire to be like Greg or anything like that. It was just the number, the number struck a chord. So then I decided, you know what? This might just be bloody possible. I've gone. I've put sixty-five pound on in six months. All right. Granted, there's some water and there is some fat, but there was a good thirty pound of timber in there. Yeah. And it's like, can I repeat this if I start adding? Because basically, all I'd use is test and decker. And it was like, if I start throwing in insulin and growth, and take this up a lodge, I'd probably be able to reduce the steroid level. 
and and I reckon I can do this. And so I embarked on the second project. Uh, unfortunately, from very early on, I was befrit with injuries and problems, and I lost sight. There's no denying it. I mean, if anyone's watched the film, they can quite see that. All it is really is a film showing me slowly degrading health and ability. Um, I got some nervous issues with my femoral nerve being trapped. Put me in a wheelchair for several months. I didn't think, it started with initially with a back spasm. Now, I didn't think this was going to be a long-term injury, so I, I only reduced doses that didn't come off. Weeks turned into months. Months got longer and longer, and the whole project ended up being well over a year. Being on cycle for well over a year, especially at some of the doses I was hitting at times, had a massive impact on my health. Now, what ended it all was my kidneys stopped working. What was discovered was that my kidneys hadn't functioned right for a very long period of time, and that's why I had the issues when I was dieting for the show when I was 306. It was water, but I was seeing it as fat because I had no idea I had the problem. My kidneys hadn't worked since I was obese. It was obesity that sort of wrecked my kidneys. And when I'd got over 375 pounds, they started to struggle again. Now, eventually, I weighed in at 415, 420 pounds the day I went into hospital. Wow. And I came out at, I think it was 3, 360, 370 with abs nearly. Right. There you go. There's a diet for you. Spend some time in five, hospital. Five, five days. I dropped 50, wow. 60 pounds in water in five days. Unbelievable. So, it wait, was that bad. It, even my nuts and my old man had swollen up with water retention. Unbelievable, mate. So uh, interestingly, <clears throat> you know, your your reputation within the industry is for somebody that actually spends more time in the harm prevention than the use of um, enhancement drugs because the prevention of it of the of the side effects is so so important and people don't even take that into account. Now, when I start, yeah, I mean, I'm... well, sorry, mate. When I started working with you, I remember. Okay, so for, I have clients that want to take steroids and I do not know enough about it in the slightest okay so I'm in my opinion I am very good at nutrition and I understand it to a very good level and someone more than one person has asked me in the past oh what about steroids and I said well if I was going to give any sort of advice on it I would need to know it to the same level that I know my nutrition and I just don't have the the inclination or the time to to learn all about that side of a business so I got in touch with Dave and you the first uh, recommendations that you sent me were very short or, or very small amounts of actual uh, use of drugs but a huge amount of um, harm reduction uh, compounds if you like to make sure that your cholesterol's right make sure your liver's functioning right make sure your kidneys are right and so on and so forth and, you know that was like three times as much stuff that you need to take for that than the gear and you're absolutely right you still see it today in the gym i don't know 18 19 20 year old kids that haven't got any size on them haven't even attempted to get as big as they can naturally coming out of a a half-assed workout where they've been on their phone most of the time getting a shake from from the 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 bar and asking okay what drugs do i need to take and it's just completely back to front so I don't understand, and this is this is no criticism of anyone in particular, but I do not understand why is it in 1980, when you walked in the gym, you could spot every steroid user by a mile off. You walk into a gym now, and if they were honest and put their hand up to those who are using steroids, half of them look like they live in fucking Greg's, not like they train. Yeah. Now, the drugs aren't that weak now. All right, we run on UGLs, and some arts are good. I appreciate that. And underdosing is a big issue, and about 50% are underdosed. But the point is, it's not having that much of a dramatic influence. So where, what's changed? Is it the training? Is it the nutrition? Or is it the understanding? And I, I see guys, I, typical example, a guy messaged me yesterday through the website. Um, I'm using this and this. I'm dying at the same time. But I'm not getting the same feel I was getting before when I did the same cycle and I was dying. I'm not as strong in the gym. And I said, all right. And I went through it all. And then he dropped into the conversation they was running Letro at 2.5 mega a day. And I said, okay. I said, well, that's why you're not strong. You've got no estrogen in your body. What do you mean? Well, you won't grow. You won't get any strength with no estrogen, mate. It's just as important as test. It's just got to be controlled. You don't 
kill the fleet. Yeah. I understand these basic things. I mean, all through what I was doing, I was also developing the harm reduction side of what I do. I, I did a couple of years on the electric uh, circuit, lecturing at various conferences and stuff, and then I started doing some tra- work, training work with the police, uh, and then I started I, I developed a program for the military, which are now delivered to the military in the RAF. I'm now looking at delivering that same. The police work previously has been in the case of um, enforcement, but now they're actually looking at developing programs in the case of staff health, because they're getting a lot of staff failing drug tests. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah and when you look at the profile of typically what a steroid user is and the point of the psychological profile of them a, 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 a squatty or a copper they do fit the profile very very well so it's not surprising that use is becoming prevalent in those those areas um and it's just grown from there so i've, I've always I've, the, 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 it is harm reduction but it's also about not just being about harm reduction it's about being efficient with your drug use hmm. Because if you're efficient and productive with your drug use, then you don't need as much. And if you don't need as much, well, that's harm reduction at the same time. Absolutely, yeah. So if you, if you get people to construct cycles more efficiently and more effectively that produce better results, they can use less. And it's just, with, with, I don't think it's particularly a reflection on, on the drugs as such, but I think it's more a reflection on society that we, we live in a society now where we want everything yesterday. We don't want to do the work for it and we want to take it in a tablet form. Yep, and we want to be able to take that picture and stick it on social media within within a couple of weeks to say, I mean, look, look how good I look. You'll see it in nutrition. How many people take supplements for vitamins and minerals and, and produce that they could get from real food because they can't be bothered eating the real food? Yeah. Can't eat greens, never eat greens, never have done. Ne- even as a child, I couldn't eat them. They said, well, you're missing out a huge amount of nutrients and fibre and benefits. Yeah, yeah, but can't I just take like a... A spirulina supplement well you can do but it's not going to do you any favors compared to eating properly and you're absolutely right the um the the website that you've got up now which is uh, uh, we'll go through it later on with the actual website address but the the feel of it is very much just harm reduction you know we've, we've got all the we've got all the benefits that you're going to get from use of enhancement drugs but it almost as though it starts with like with an image that says this is about keeping you healthy and safe when you're doing something as opposed to when you know the kind of thing you get in a gym where somebody is getting second or third hand advice off of somebody else who was told it by somebody in a changing room who had bought something from somebody else that they know you know it's so misconnected and so wrong it's crazy I've seen all I, I, I saw some of the other day that I commented on, and it was a guy recommending. I'm not going to name any names because I don't want to embarrass anybody, but it was a guy recommending a set cycle, and I questioned the side effects of that cycle. And had he had blood work to confirm, he wasn't getting issues with these side effects. And he said, "Oh, I don't run that. Yeah, I run this. So why are you recommending it to somebody else then?" <laughs> If, it, it just baffles me. If, you know, if I'm if I'm right, I think I might have seen that post, and that was like the first cycle for somebody. I think, and then I know you commented on something. That was, that was a different like, one. I, was I, different. I that was one I got sent. I put up, and I absolutely oh, I couldn't believe what he was giving the guy. And this was a guy was looking for a cycle. He, he'd done cycles before. He was looking for something else, and the recommendation was uh, a gram of equipoise or bone the cyclate, which is traditionally a, a, a veterinary drug. And um, 100 megaoxymethylone, among other things, per day. Now, EQ is notorious for increasing RBC. Yeah. Probably second only to EPO for increasing red blood cell count. And oxymethylone is used in the case of anemia to, again, increase red blood cell count. So you put them two together, and you're going to have RBC issues. Yeah. And it's going to be very, very closely monitored because you could find BP spikes, all sorts of issues going on with high RBC, uh, which could also lead to then issues with iron and ferritin and everything else. So this is the point I brought up. And then the guy said, well, I don't run it. Oh, well, then why are you advertising it as something that you should do if you, you've no experience? I mean, one of the reasons I went to the high doses was partly an experiment to see at what point I got to the tipping point of effectiveness against level of dose. But it also was, how can you talk about doing 5G a week if you've not done 5G a week? Mm. 
you know, so how can you, you discuss high doses if you've not experienced them? Uh, you, you, you can read all the books you want, you can take all the anecdotal evidence you want, but unfortunately we are all individuals, and if you don't experience these things for yourself, then it's very difficult to, to say without doubt, look, these things are the sort of things you're going to start to feel and suffer. Absolutely, and a lot of those side effects will potentially be unique to you, but at least you are able to communicate that to somebody and say, look, you're going to feel like this Mm. at this stage and, and mm. that's the bits that people forget about you you see guys they put up posts oh on this this and this feeling great and then two days later i'll get a message from the same person my dick don't work i've got no appetite i feel like shit i'm tired all the time yeah so why are you tell everybody you feel fucking brilliant when the truth of the matter you feel like frigging arse you know the bottom line is High dose of gear will make you feel like shit. You know, you're not going to feel like Superman. You're not going to want to get out of bed in the morning. You're going to feel that tired. And people just don't don't purvey these problems. They're not honest about it. They only speak about it because they feel then, if they're honest about the problems they're having, it's reflected as a failure. It's reflected that they've done something wrong or they've messed up. So they constantly put a, a positive light on it. And, and don't get me wrong, I mean, steroids can be very positive for people. And I have seen people and work with people who... It has massively improved their quality of life for various reasons. Uh, but at the same time, they can be very devastating as well. Uh, and I mean, I'm not pro-use, and I'm not, even though we, even with my own personal use, and I'm not con-use, I'm just pro-education. I don't believe in prohibition. I, I believe in education and being educating people to the level where they can make their own informed decision. Yeah, because everyone's got a different reason for doing something, and if, it, if they've got the education, then they can make the right decision as to whether or not it's right for them the um yeah. uh oh, i had a question then it's completely gone, gone out of my head so let's go back to the website um tell us about what's available on there because there's a lot of different sections there's a couple of different well, membership the, the, uh, initial, versions. the initial front pages of the front house of the website is more of my corporate services so we have um the expert witness work that I do in courts, which is basically for cases relating to supply of steroids. I'm a defense specialist, so basically if you're a dealer and you get caught, then you ring me and I add my advice to the case. I am an agent of the court, so I can't lie for people. So I don't think I'm getting you off, but I'll give an honest, unbiased, sensible approach to what's being found, which unfortunately is lacking in the CPS. Off the back of that, I train that to coppers as well. Um, I do corporate education for industries and environments where they're concerned that steroid use may be an issue, uh, predominantly at the moment military, RAF and police, but I've done it to the prison services as well, both inmates and staff. And I know aviation authorities are now starting to look at it a little bit, and I know rail travel look at it as well, so there's areas in that. Um, and then the main bulk, is, and we do school education. Uh, I mean, we cover all drugs, but we specialise in steroids. So we do school education on, on supplement and in, in uh, performance and imaging drugs uh, education. We also do programs for the GCSEs, PE um, qualification. Unfortunately, the curriculum only covers stuff like EPO, but we, we do broad spectrum it a bit more, so they've got a better understanding of enhancement drugs. <clears throat> and we do a one-to-one -one service. Now, the site, the second stage of the site is subscription. Uh, it's four ninety nine a month, um, and that gives you access to drug profiles, which I've written. At the moment, they cover all the main steroids. Uh, I am currently working, uploading stuff on estrogen management, and then we're going to do peptides, and we'll do SARMs, and we'll do growth hormone, and we'll do insulin. But the growth hormone and insulin are quite complex topics, so they ain't coming for a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we have general articles. Uh, we have an article on understanding blood results, what the figures and numbers mean, what they relate to within your body, supplements you can take to help, to prevent, support, whatever it may be. Uh, we have articles about estrogen management. We have videos up there about estrogen management. We have articles about Easter weights, about drug half-lifes. Uh, and we have uh, research articles. Uh, so these are articles that I buy from various medical journals and these uh, will go through relevant research regarding the drugs that are used within the sport. So the latest one I put up was one on a Tremblone study with rats. 
showing brain degradation and memory degradation due to tremble on you. Okay, so still death. So the, for the four ninety nine, people can access all the education that they need to be able to make an informed decision, assuming the fact that they're going to sit there and go through all the data that, that you're providing, which is... The thing is, it's growing all the time as well. I mean, I've, I've got two articles to post today from a guy called Anders in Denmark, who's he's Denmark's leading authority on steroids. Um, one's on GH gut, doesn't yeah. exist. And the other one was on hydrotrophy. So they'll be going up today. Uh, so I'm adding all the time, but also there is an ask me button. Yes. That, that basically gives them access via a contact sheet to myself uh, and they can ask as much as they want for as long as they want. As long as that subscription is valid, they'll get access to me and I'll answer their questions. And that's, uh, sorry, David, that's just for the four ninety nine. Yeah. So four ninety nine a month, they can get direct contact with you and they can ask you whatever they need and get whatever advice they want back on that as well. Yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, some of them are simple stuff. You know, do I take D-ball or do I take testosterone as my first cycle? Uh, and then some, uh, uh, I mean, I had a guy that took several hours, which was analyzing all his uh, blood results. And it was quite complex because he had calcium issues, which was muddying the rest of the results. So uh, I've put in, we've, I've put in a, a series of supplementation to get rid of some of the issues and scheduled him for a retest in three weeks' time. So I can look at them more and see if these issues that have been coming up are, are underlying problem or if it's just been yeah. affected because his calcium was so poor. Um, I mean, he had a CK of two thousand. Wow! But it just trend. Yeah. Okay. Low, low calcium will increase CK as well quite effectively. So, so there's there's bits like that that I need to um, you know let's remove the thing that causes the problem and and then we can have a look and see what your real readings are. I, he messaged me just concerned about the CK and his lipids were out, his RBC was out, his ferritin was out, his calcium was really low. And considering there were, there were factors in there that were artificially boosting his calcium levels, the real total calcium must be even Very lower. Low. And I bet his uh, AST and ALT were, were off the chart as well, I thought. Yeah, so it was, it was, it was like you know we need to we need to clear the water a little bit so we can have a better look at what's going on. So, uh, so it's, it varies, but yeah, as long as your description is fine. I mean, some people say it's too expensive, some people say it's too cheap. The point is, I was doing most of this work for free via messenger, and I was I was letting people down because I wasn't keeping track of the messages because I was getting so many they were getting lost. Because yeah. this is all email based now, I, I can keep a better track of it and keep on top. And at least I'm getting paid for my time again now. Dave, sorry, I just want to clarify something. If somebody's on the four ninety nine, they can get as much advice as they need from you on a one to one basis. So if they turn and go, right, it's my first cycle, what do you suggest? You will send them the the uh, the cycle, the um, harm no, prevention no. stuff. No, I okay. won't design a cycle. Right. That's what I want to Cycle know. will be a surcharge. Okay. Good. The cycle would be fifty quid. Okay, because I was uh, gonna say otherwise that's just ridiculously cheap. No, no, no. It, it's for advice and questions. Now, if you propose a cycle, I'll say, yeah, I'll know to bits. Yeah. What I won't, I won't design cycles because cycles, cycles take, as you know, you know the amount of information I ask from from you. Yeah, yeah. You know the history I need to know, health checks I need to know. That isn't a, 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 a short question. That takes a lot of time and planning. And, and if that's what you want, then you're going to have to pay. Yeah. But no, so not with cycles, because uh, the thing is with the cycles as well, when I design a cycle, I track and manage the cycle with them. So when someone pays me for a cycle, so they, they pay me the fee for the cycle, I plan the cycle, we go through the health, we go through everything, and then I'm there for the duration of the cycle. So they're not just paying for the planning, they're paying for almost the monitoration as well throughout the cycle. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, know, and I do know guys that, you consult with for me who will send you a brief email saying look what should i do here should i do this for this amount of weeks etc etc and you just come back to them and say right this is where you need to be with it and it's adjusted if it needs to be or the advice is always there so it, and it, it, it seems to have worked. i was worried when we first started we'd have a bit of clashes because of obviously the, these things are very um you know is the trinity almost you've got to have the diet and i thought are we going to say but it's always worked really really well and we have a couple of what I'd call quite good success stories as well. One, one gentleman I'm thinking of, I won't say his name, just out uh, client confidentiality, but he has made some impressive gains in the last 12 months. Indeed. In fact, he's competing next week. 
if, yes. I, if it's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. Um, and yeah, but I think it works very well because like I say, there's no point in me trying to give any sort of advice like that because I don't know about it. But it, if we can work in an environment where we know the harm reduction's right, the efficiency of the cycle's good, and the client has chosen to do that, then you know I'm going to try and support it from a nutritional point of view as much as possible. Um, what gets me is when people turn around and say, you know, 4.99. Well, that's ridiculous. I can get it for free on the internet. And you look at it and you go, no. The whole point of you spending a very small amount of money every month is because the information you will get for free is going to be misleading, potentially very, very dangerous. And it, I mean, it's it's cost the way I, I the, the way I envisage the site to be is basically a one stop shop for drugs. Yeah. So when it when it will be fully stocked with information, and unfortunately this takes time, but it's, I add every week, um, and at the moment I'm doing three four days a week in in inputting information. But uh, the idea is that it gets to the point where if you need to know about anything regarding steroids, you go there and you will be able to find it. So you're not having to go to iSteroid or another one or another one and jump between. Everything's there. Everything's being verified. And the, everything that's on there is backed up with science. If it's not, it's stated that the evidence behind this conclusion is antidote. So people know what's scientifically proven and what's just come from experience. And so they can make their own choices and decisions on that. Two things. One, is is there a, a minimum period of time they need to be subscribed? No. So they can come on and go as they please. Great. And two, what about from a training perspective? Is there anything uh, related to that that's on there? No. No, just that. Okay. Not, not really. Um, you know, I, I thought about including training. Then I thought, well, then I'm going to have to start looking at nutrition issues. And I thought, I know that my nutrition knowledge is okay. It's not the best. Yep. You know, I'm a one-trick pony. I specialize in one subject, and I'd rather keep it that way. So I thought, you know what? Though I will touch on it, uh, I I tend to just I, I like to just let's just stick with what we're good at. Uh, and there's plenty of people out there can help with training. And I've never been a fan of online training coaching because uh, I you can instruct someone on an exercise, you can you can give them a video of how to do it, but unless you're actually physically there with them, yep. you can't pick up the nuances and the little bits like hand positions being slightly out or finger grip being slightly wrong and stupid little stuff like that but that stuff that can absolutely transform the connectivity of, a, of an exercise so i decided i'd stay well away from that i'll leave that to jp he can carry on with his because that's quite good as well <laughs> the uh, okay so this is my opinion on this site okay and if anyone's listening and they are contemplating using any kind of drugs they want to find out more about them or they're already using them and have used them for i don't care how many years I don't know of a better resource for the money that is out there that is as comprehensive. And I've had a I've had a route through, and um, it, you know you'd be a fool not to spend at least one or two months subscription and get yourself kind of the best advice there is out there, especially from a longevity and a harm reduction point of view, because too many people just do not look at that when it comes to. Um, use of any kind of enhancement drug so my, my opinion get onto that particular site have a look at it um, and, and really use it the best you can what's the site uh, the address Dave it's www.crossland c-r-o-s-l-a-n-d-s dot org dot uk brilliant so very simple and it's a it's an easy site to get through yeah, I've made it quite simple. It's not the flashiest of sites, but one, because I'm absolutely crap with tech and I wouldn't be able to manage it from back of house as it was. <laughs> uh, and two, I just wanted, you know, let's be honest, you know, the guys that need the help aren't always the best academically, which is why they're in the situation they're in the first place. So I didn't want to make it overly complex. And yeah, there are some big wordy articles on there, but there's some very plain speaking articles on there as well. I mean, there's even general stuff about you know, the need for, for the, the dangers within the fact that dunks are underdosed or not as they're labelled and, and bits like that. And we're, we're looking to develop some links with some testing facilities, uh, which we'll 
be able to channel through the site as well. So there, there'll be, uh, there's also I remember listening to you on a podcast a little while ago, um, and I'm pretty sure if I can recall this accurately, that you had a meeting with Pfizer, and they said themselves they cannot tell the difference between a genuine and a counterfeit drug unless they actually open it up and take the, the substance out. I think it was growth that they were talking about. Um, yeah, the Pfizer, and Pfizer have, have a big problem with forgeries and they, they said they, they've been incredibly impressed with some of the stuff that's landing on their doorstep. They obviously have batch reference numbers, but yeah. said, unfortunately they just copy existing batch reference numbers. So it will check out on their computer systems as being the genuine article. So the only thing they can do is actually test it. Yeah, and that, so they, yeah. they find it containing growth. It's just not their growth. <laughs> yeah. But that in itself is a really important area that people don't take into account because when, like you're saying, not only are they underdosed, but a lot of times they don't know what's in them. And they can have two vials that have got the same batch number on with two completely different substances in there. It's particularly bad with blends. Yeah. Uh, stuff like test 400 and you'll find it, you know that it's supposed to be 75 mega prop and it's actually 210 mega prop because props obviously the cheapest one they can put in it right. and the other stuff is very low so you find stuff like that obviously you know Winstrol instead of Anavar uh, and, and various other bits and bats like that you, are quite common yeah and it's not I mean I in a way I don't know if it's lucky or unlucky but because of the court work I get access to a lot of forensic material when it comes to seizures and the two things in the last five years that stand out, uh, the biggest one is I have yet to see genuine pharma in a seizure. I don't care how fancy the ampules are. I don't care how fancy the boxes are. Every single one has come back as being fake. A lot with no active ingredient, some with underdosing or different substances. Um, and then the other one is the amount of products that are um, adulterated yeah. with different products. Even labs that I know to be good, I've seen a paperwork on their stuff and there's been the odd ones that have come back as being adulterated. So it is common, it does happen a lot and unfortunately we don't have at present an efficient means of testing that's cost viable. There is one coming, I do know of one that's starting very, very shortly. But the initial service is going to be limited because of the way they, they've set it up. Is uh, They've done it in such a way that it can be irrefutable. So there can be no, it's completely anonymous. You have to send a sample in in one of their sample vials. You cannot send the original vial in or they won't test it. They only test for what you specifically asked for and they test it against an industry standard. So they have a certified sample of the drug in question that they know has been certified by the chemical industry as being 100% pure. And it's tested against that, not against the library spectrum. Yeah. So, so do you no know, way can be wrong. it's been such a long time coming and it's been needed for so long because like anything that is underground, there are always going to be people that are there for the money and not for the product. So and some of it's genuine. I mean, you know, if you on a lab, let, let's for argument say, you know, Paul, Paul's or Paul's orals have set up. Yeah, thanks very much. And, and, and that's all right. And uh, you 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 farm out ten thousand bottles a week. All right, that's that's what you're making ten thousand bottles a week. So you're roughly converting two and a half kilo of test a week into injectables. One week, your shipment comes through, and you get a kilo and a half. So do you turn around? to just over, you know, to 400 of your, your customers that need, well, the customers that need 400 bottles that you supply and, four, sorry, 4,000 bottles that you supply and turn around and say, I can't supply that. Or do you say, you know what, I'll make this stretch. Yeah. It's only one week. And that's, that happens as well. And good labs, reputable labs that do try and produce a genuine product do get in a squeeze. And rather than disappoint customers, they'll produce substandard products for a couple of weeks until they get back on top with supplies. You know, you, everyone forgets the raw chain comes in from China through customs and customs seeds hmm. regularly. Yeah. And that is the big weak link in the supply chain. And as a result, they've got nowhere else to go. It has to come from there. Uh, and if they are seized, they're stuck up the creek without a paddle because they've got a, a demanding client base that wants product. So I can see 
the motivation. And then obviously you do have those that set up, produce a good product, get a good reputation, and they think, right, come on now, we'll water it down, and they'll get away with it probably anything 12 months to 18 months before the names break. Mm. And then you just start again with a different name. Yeah. yeah start it, again with a different name and repeat the process. It's just so dangerous if you get it very wrong. and mm. But it can be very beneficial if you get it right, obviously, if you're doing it in the right way with the with the right goals in mind. So uh, I think... Yeah, the, I mean, I've worked with people that have had serious disability in body image issues where, you know, they've not been able to go out, they've not been able to maintain a job, they've not been able to function, and they've used steroids to improve their physical body image, and it's given them a life. They've been sensible with the usage, and they've used it, yeah, they've used it for cosmetic reasons, but it's given them a life. They, yeah. they now do function as an individual. And then you start the process of making them less dependent on the chemical. Because they do become so. I mean, this is the big thing as well. Oh, steroids are addictive, steroids are addictive. Actually, nandrolones do affect the D1 dopamine receptor. So there is some merging evidence that there may be, if nothing less, a feel-good factor involved. Yeah. But they are definitely psychologically addictive, and a lot of people are dependent. And I mean, I've worked with people that have quit jobs because it interrupted with their, their drug dosing cycles. Uh, and all sorts of mad things. And you're thinking, Jesus Christ, you know, well, you're an addict. No, 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 no. You know, and they get very, very defensive. You are making choices in your life over very serious subjects to benefit your drug-taking habits. How can that not be addiction? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's, it's a growing problem. We do have a growing problem, but then we have a society that's very much under the microscope when it comes to uh, social media pressure. Yeah. And that causes so many problems. Do you do you ever get involved with uh, testosterone replacement therapy for older clients? Do you ever get any of those sort of questions? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, most have been to the doc and been given the cold shoulder, and they'll send me the blood results. And usually, it's just a case of the, the one or two points above the threshold. Yeah, but they're symptomatic, and I mean, this is what annoys me sometimes is. Um, Generally speaking, not always, but generally speaking, general practice says, if you don't fit the box, then sorry, it's not available to you. Now, you may not be under the lower limit for test, but if you're symptomatic and you've got all the symptoms and you've got weight gain, you've got depression, you've got low libido, then you're suffering from low test. So a lot of people, when they get into that situation, do turn to self-administration and a lot get it wrong. Because they suddenly start 250 mega tests a week, and it's like, whoa, yeah. this, this is close to a cycle, mate. This isn't this isn't TRT, yeah. and that's a big misconception. And, and it's there's, there's two things I've been harping on about for years, and I got laughed at when I first started kicking off about this shit. Oh, you're talking bollocks. It's no big deal. Lipid management and cruisers should be 100, 125 mega week, no more. And I get, I get guys cruising on 400, cruising on 500. Yeah. You know, 500 is a cycle. But the trouble with a lot of this is they have lost the conception of being on a cycle. So I know people yes. who I've been stood in front of them and I know them very well and they are very nice people and I have not got a problem with them, but I've stood there in front of somebody in a gym with somebody else. And uh, so we were training and this guy was... Um, showing his legs in the in the mirror he was looking at them and uh and he was in really good shape and i said to him you know you're looking good mate and he goes yeah natural that i said natural what are you talking about he said yeah yeah natural i'm not taking anything i promise you in the same sentence he says all i'm taking is a bit of anavar and a bit of test and a bit of something else and i went mate what are you talking about he said yeah but that's all and they honestly, genuinely believe, if you put them on a lie detector test, they would genuinely believe that they are not taking anything because it is so low doses in their, in their mind. Or they, 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 they'll take something oral between cycles, say, no, I don't take anything because it's oral. It doesn't count. And you go, well, yeah, you and, or, or they take, I mean, this is a big guy, the big argument I have with people as well is, right, I'm coming off, so I'm going to use Psalms. Psalms still cause shutdown. Right, it's to a lesser degree, but they still potentially cause shutdown, especially the doses you're running about. So how is that being off? Yeah. You know, and people say, oh, well, I don't get the side effect. Yeah, you don't get the side effect from the drugs, but you're still clinically shut down. You stop your dick working four days and then four years, sorry, for four years, and then turn around and say, oh, I want you to work again. Chances are it's going to go, I surrender. Yeah. I ain't doing it. 
you know, and this is the, it's it's like, look, guys, it's not just about managing lipids and managing your liver or your kidneys or your heart. You've also got to think about testicular function. Otherwise, you're signing up to TRT for the rest of your life. Yeah. Well, that's fine. It's medical. There's no problems. Isn't there? You look at the studies on TRT users and find out how many of them do actually have medical issues attached because they've been on TRT for 20 years. Yeah. Most TRT patients that are long-term now have to run some form of issue management. Yeah, absolutely. They have Why lipid you? issues. Yeah. You know, the, they have lipid issues. They have body fat issues. It's like, whoa, no, it isn't just because it's prescribed doesn't make it frigging safe. Yeah, absolutely. The, I'm, I know I've sent you bloods that we've done for clients in the past. And I, can't, I don't know if you remember them, but we've got two ranges oh, on one, one set being quite horrendous. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. And But you know what? That guy had come off of being with another coach that had, you know, advised what he had advised there's no monitoring of it whatsoever but on ours they've got two ranges they've got the gp range and then they've got the what we look as an optimal range and we know yeah. that if you're in the optimal range you, you tend to be asymptomatic you you, you tend to be well yeah. and you're absolutely right the the doctor's range is so wide that people will still be just in the range but they're pre they're presenting all the symptoms of whatever problem it might be but you're right. But you go to the GP and he says, no, your bloods are fine. Well, I mean, prime example, the guy was talking about the calcium issues. It's like, it was only two points out. And he's like, well, it's only two points. I said, yeah, your whole range is only one. one yeah. 1 1.2, wherever it is. So point, point 0.2 out is actually proportionally a bloody hell of a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing people don't look at. You know, if your range is... 600 m mole, then if you're 5 m mole out, yeah, it's not for much. But if your range is 5 m mole and you're 5 m mole out, it's a bloody lot. Yeah. And people don't look at it in reference to the range either. I mean, the ranges, they are a bit dated, and unfortunately, they are structured for average man. They're not structured for a 16, 17, 18 stone muscle guy. And certain things you have to take into account, especially with creatinine and, and CK and stuff, you have to start, like, did you train and start to remove variable factors that can cause an issue with it. And then go back and get a trip. And, and generally speaking, it's just right. You have to go back and get tested for this, this, and this. I mean, with a guy with a CK, I've asked him to go back and get an ISO, ISO test so that he's got all three CK ranges so we can see whether it's muscle, brain, or heart that's causing the issue. Yeah. Um, the, interestingly, then, someone wants to get a test, a, a blood test done. Would you, because they come to me and ask me this as well, would you advise them to do it whilst they're on a cycle, when they're on a PCT, or when they are off? And if it is off, how long do they have to be off? Hang on, you're breaking up. Right. It, I, I think it depends. I mean, obviously, there is no point doing hormone testing while you're on cycle or PCT. The only test you want to be doing while on cycle for hormone is estrogen. The rest of it you can forget. And if you're using Trembolone, you can forget the estrogen as well. Because Trembolone shows up as estrogen in a, in a test on when you're using it. So there's no point because you will not get a true reading. So unfortunately, if you use Trembolone, you have to get your E2 management by feel. Right. Which is shit. Because I've had my E2 as high as 500 and I've had no symptoms. So it is just completely crap using it that way. Uh, but the only hormone worth testing on cycle is, is E2, progesterone, prolactin, obviously those three. Um, regards everything else, blood and health should be monitored throughout all periods. But in an ideal world, what you would do before you start any drug use at all is you would get a full palate test, hormone, thyroid, bloods, everything you can get worked and then pin it to your wall because that is your benchmark yeah and then i usually say wait four to six weeks post pct before you have any hormones done because pc tab uh, drugs can have an effect for quite a period afterwards and then you can get an effective reading of you return to normal or not uh with june uh, i i generally what i try and get guys to do is a pre-cycle test so we know you're fit to do the cycle. One at four weeks, which includes an E2 management, so we can adjust that. And then generally, I'm quite happy to leave it unless we find any symptoms arising or there's an area that we're concerned with that we need to monitor. And then usually do one pre-PCT and then one four weeks close, close the PCT. And where would you suggest they get those done? Would you just go to the GP or would you have do you know, uh, it privately? It all depends on your relationship with your GP. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, Medicheck, though it's not the ideal one because it's 
pinprick, they're very cost effective, and in general terms, they're there or thereabouts. It will at least give you an indication that something's not quite right. Then I would follow up with a GP. So if, if I get a Medicheck 1 and it's starting to show things out of whack, I'll go to my GP with the Medicheck 1 and say, look, I've had this. It is pinprick, so it's not the most accurate. Um, but I'd like to know, um, you know, could you test me on these areas and add in this, this, and this just to confirm that this isn't the starting signs of something going on. Um, now, um, I, I know someone, a, a good friend of mine, is he, actually about to conduct an experiment where he's going to do a pinprick and he's going to do drawn blood and he's going to get them both tested to see what the variance is in levels between the two formats so we can you know say with some confidence that the variance is five percent ten percent or whatever it is so we have a, a better idea of, of how vague pinprick is but in the absence of anything else it's better than nothing uh, absolutely if it's something uh, sorry if it's something that is going to potentially show issues then it's certainly a good starting place that like you say get the gp say look i think this might be a problem they've then got a reason for doing the bloods because if i go to the doctor now and say i want my test testosterone tested unless i have a symptom then they generally say no to me because they're it's an expensive thing for them to do but yeah. if i go in there and say oh yeah i'm um I've, I've, I've got low libido then all of a sudden they'll go oh, okay well if you're saying that then we'll test you it's, it can be quite difficult especially with uh practices nowadays who are big and they're busy and it's like the last thing they've got on their mind sort of thing you you do have to play a bit of a game if you're going to use your gp for testing i mean i'm quite lucky in a way because i have a kidney issue i can get bloods done from a health perspective anytime i want yeah a hormone that i get them i pay for them privately uh and then uh, i i'll just you know right okay i need to do something and if it's beyond my control or i'm starting to be suspicious there's something more going on I'll take those results and use that as the evidence yeah. and say, look, this is what I've got. I need, I need to investigate this. Just out when, of interest, do you ever use the Dutch test for your hormones? Or no. do you know of it? Okay, so Dutch test is basically they use um, urine four times throughout the day to look at the metabolites of cortisol, adrenaline, so on and so forth, estrogen, so that they can see actually what's being taken up and used as opposed to what's in the blood, the free flowing stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's a really interesting test. It comes up with some very, very good data that we don't get the same when you draw the bloods with. So there's, 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 pros, there's pros and cons to both, isn't there? I mean, unfortunately, uh, as it, when you're using those sort of tests, are, are, are pointless. Used. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I know a lot of drug testing for sports use that same format. They yeah. go for the urine. But then again, there's been issues with that because the levels have just been a little bit high and it's like, well, is that a natural spike or is that a... Yeah. And, and so there's all sorts of... But yeah, I mean, you know, in an ideal world, we'd walk into a lab and get a work over. But unfortunately, cost is prohibitive and access is prohibitive, so we just got to do the best we can. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've used uh, a company called Vitruvian Man, which are very, very good. Um, and they're... NHS trained, uh, to be honest, I actually think they're, they're NHS professionals with a bit of sideline. <laughs> <laughs> but I found them very, very good, both in, in the level of testing that they do, because they do full blood testing, and also in, in the information that's returned off the back of them as well. Um, but yeah, it is, it is a minefield, but at least if you're doing something, it's better than nothing. What was the name of that testing company? Vitruvian Man. The Truvian, okay. So yeah, they're on will, Facebook. Sorry, are they on Facebook? Okay. Yeah, they're not cheap, no. but it's money well spent. Well, no, we mate. Let me tell you, some people will come into us for bloods, and they'll be spending, you know, the high hundreds into the thousands because I think it's he's about one hundred and twenty quid for a full test. So that so, is that's yeah. very cheap. Let me tell you, seriously. So, yeah, but many, many checks is sixty five quid. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's again, we get into this accuracy, aren't we? Do we want to spend? Yeah. But so I'll I mean, get the if, links if to you both really want to go to town, uh, I use, a, and there's only one in the country, unfortunately. Um, it's called Conscious Health. It's in the second film. It's based in Halifax. Uh, and they do a myriad of tests. Uh, they use a lot of 
for want of a better term, new age technology. Um, and they do a lot of um, invasive testing. Um, and it was them that found the heavy metal poisoning in my systems. And they analyze live blood. Right. So they they put your blood under electron microscope in front of them and they analyze the blood and they say, right, that's antibodies, that's an infection. Yeah. These blood cells are malformed, which means you've got something going on with this. Uh, and it is very, very accurate in, in certain areas. I wouldn't say it, it's it's foolproof because I never picked up on my bloody kidneys. Uh, <laughs> interesting. But it did pick up on some other things. Uh, and the, the strange thing was they were sat there telling me my symptoms. I hadn't said a word to them about what I was experiencing. And they were saying, you've got this going on, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. Yeah, interesting. The, uh, I've had live bloods yeah. done before, and when you do see them visually in front of you like that, you can see potentially white blood cells or, uh, like you say, antibodies, or you can see them clumping together a bit or the shape isn't quite as they should be. Um, yeah. it, it does make you sit up and go, okay, some of these things need to be addressed quite quickly. Um, I mean, the strange thing with that one, I'd, I'd had a general GP test about two weeks before, and it was like, yeah, everything's fine, electrolyte balance is fine. Uh, she pulled me and said, your electrolytes are out, you're dehydrated. Uh, and she got this from actually visually looking at the blood. I corrected that, and within three days, uh, the change in the way I looked was phenomenal. Mm. Uh, and I even I was like, Jesus. Uh, and, and within three days later, I was as full as a house, and I pushed a 26-inch arm because I, I wasn't hydrated. I wasn't full. Yeah, even uh, though you're drinking five litres a day that you think is hydrating eight. you, it's not. Yeah, so... Yeah. It, it's um, so, you know, it, it is... It is a little bit of trial and error, and, and, and unfortunately, that and this is where we get against stumbling block is the health aspects and the health management generally cost more than the cycles, though. Yeah, and that's why but, people don't want to do it because it's so expensive. But people have to realise that. Uh, trust me. Yeah. When you get older, you will appreciate that money spent. For sure. The, uh, the one of the reasons I didn't put onto Facebook that you were coming on today. And if anyone's got any questions, is because I knew that 90% of the questions were going to be about, should I take this, should I do that, should I do the other? And that's clearly what they are joining your website for, to find that out properly. Um, but it's good to hear the depth at which you go to when assessing somebody, looking at the different options that are available, the different types of bloods, live bloods, and so on and so forth, so that people can keep on top of things, because it is vital at the end of the day. Well, I mean, it's, it's not, it amazes me sometimes. You know, people say, uh, I'll, I'm doing a bulking cycle, what should I do? What should I take? Yeah. And you'll get this list then of answers. I'll take this, take that, take the other, take that. And it's like, now one person has asked this person, is he healthy? What size he is? What training experience he has? How good his diet is? What his previous uses is? What previous problems he's had? Is he E2 sensitive? Is it this? Is it that? Is it the other? None of them. Yeah. So how can you give someone an accurate cycle if you don't know anything about them? But I think and the person has even turned around and said, what's your goal? Obviously, it's to put muscle tissue on, but are you are you bothered? Do you want a nice dry bulk because you're very conscious about your image all the time? Or you have a work or a role or a job that means you have to look a certain way? Yeah. Or are you happy to go on all out bulk and just purely push for mass, even though it might mean a bit of water retention, a bit of ugliness in the process? And also, uh, they don't take into account things that are seen as away from the drug use so when i say drug use i'm talking about uh, steroid use because they won't look at what's your alcohol like what's your recreational drug use like because they tend oh, to go okay. hand in hand right what yeah. what's your cholesterol have you ever any problems with it before we start doing this and potentially pushing it up again let's see if you already got a problem they don't look at any of that no and i mean the other thing is as well you know the amount of people that aren't here today because they've taken a stimulant yeah because they use steroids, and it's like, well, you know, you always get that, oh, steroids never killed anyone. Well, there are actually a few deaths that have been recorded to steroid use now, to be honest, and, and most of them are inaccurate as well. But the point is, there are plenty of people who would still be walking around on this planet today if they hadn't used. Now, the steroids might not have killed them, but they definitely loaded the gun. Hmm. And I've lost friends because they've taken stuff like ephedrine pre-workout, and the gears had such an effect on the, their RBC was so high, or the plot levels are so bad that that's one day that stimulant was just that too much and it mm. caused the cardiac arrest. 
Um, and it's not as popular as it used to be. I mean, Ephedrine used to be around like bloody smarties back in the day. But, you know, this obsession for stronger and stronger pre-workouts and stronger and stronger stimulants, and not one of them thinking, well, hang on a minute, if I've not managed my cholesterol or I've not been watching my bloods and I don't know what I'm doing, literally taking this new pre-workout from whoever might kill me. Mm. And the trouble is they don't even take it into their consciousness as a question. It doesn't even, they're not even aware that they should be aware of it. And the worst still are the fat burners and um, oh, what's the particular one that is known to be very, very dangerous? Can't DMP? Be. Yeah, DMP. Um, now, this is a strange thing about DMP. DMP as a chemical isn't actually that bad. In fact, I would have said that clenbuterol has probably got more health risks than DMP. Okay. The problem with DMP is that it's not available as a South Pharma product. Now, I do batch purchasing, and then I get them tested to see what's happening in the marketplace. I've got some 125 mg DMP tabs that are 225. Right. Now, for some of my size, I'd probably look at taking three of them. That, that is literally the difference between me being alive and being dead. Yeah, absolutely. Because once you overdose on that, there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing. You got, you're basically you're sitting there. The, the lowest dose death recorded at present was 400 milligrams. Right. Now, most guys bang that in quite readily. And that took that guy three days to die. And for three days, he knew he was dying and there was nothing could be done for him. Yeah. Uh, so DMP is one of them drugs where it, it is very, very dangerous. But it's not so much the chemical, it's more the application of the drug. And this is the other thing, right? You turn around to someone, now maybe not so much in the bodybuilding facility, but you turn around to someone and say, all right, what's it do then? Oh, effectively, it's a, it's a carb blocker. What do you mean? Well, it basically means if you eat carbs, they can't be absorbed by your body, so you just shit them straight out. Oh, great. I'll take that. Right, that's my stream. It doesn't matter now because I'm on DMP. Yeah. And I wonder why two hours later that a sweaty mess in the corner going, yeah. and can't cope anymore. You know, and people do have that mentality. You remember, I remember it with Ali when Ali first came out, the fat binder. There were people that were shitting themselves in the street yeah. because they were eating fry ups because they had Ali in them and thought, well, I can't absorb the fat, it's not a problem. Yeah, and it yeah. was going straight through them and they were having these big oily stains on the back of their pants. Yeah. One, of the, one of the side effects, uncontrollable anal leakage. That's, yes. what, they put on the, that's what they put on the, on the packet. And, uh, <laughs> and people still take it. It was like, come on, man. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, they've refined it a bit now, haven't they? So it's less less harmful than it used to be. But yeah, I mean, there are some dangerous ones out there. But a lot of the, I mean, ephedrine, right? Probably the the longest. I mean, fucking hell, twenty years ago, Ultimate Orange. Yeah. Oh God, that stuff was unbelievable. Unbeknown to everybody that was using it, it was full of basically amphetamine. But I mean, that stuff. But ephedrine. In its own, it is a form of amphetamine, and, and the symptoms and side effects caused by that can be as strong as amphetamine abuse. And I personally have experienced paranoia and anxiety, severe anxiety issues for a number of years due to early ephedrine use. I mean, I don't touch stimulants at all now. I'm, I'm very, very reluctant to. I won't even take pre-workouts for the same reason. But, um, and I found, you know, I in, in some of my work. I've actually come across three guys that are clinically under psychiatric care. Uh, they can't function. They can't hold down a job. They have severe paranoia. They have se severe anxiety issues. All born out of fucking drinking energy drinks. Energy drinks. Energy drinks. Caffeine mm. addiction. They were, I mean, all right, they were caning six, eight cans of Monster a day. And not only that, two of them have borderline diabetes because of the amount of sugar that were in the drinks as well. Yeah. And it's it's just like, you, you know, this this world we live in that's full of stimulants. And, and really, guys, if you're having to take a pre-workout every time you train, a stimulant-based one, you need to take yourself in a corner, give yourself a slap and see if you've got a pair of balls because something's not right. Yeah. If you can't muster what you need to do it, what you need to do in that gym without a stimulant every freaking time you train, then you've got to sit and have to give yourself a serious word. Granted, odd days, tired, double shifts, those sort of things, I can see the use. But if you're taking them religiously, <coughs> it's going to cause. You, guys know, you know, I'm taking this one, bro. I'll mix some of that one in it as well, and a bit of that one as well. And yeah. that's like, Jesus Christ, what are you doing? And not only will it cause massive adrenal issues long term, but they don't take one scoop. They no. would say, oh, the, the dose is one scoop. They go, oh, I'll take three, I'll take four. It's fine. Doesn't. My, I have a. 
I have uh, one of the presentations I do. There's a there's a there's a line in it, and there's there's a slide comes to the back of a a product, and it's highlighted where it says one scoop serve it. And the line, they literally are them. If one scoop is good, four is not fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> because the amount of people that OD on things and just take far too much. Same with protein powders. Yep. You know, if you're 13 stone, whacking in four scoops at 25 grams a scoop is not going to make you massive. It's just going to give you the bloody shit. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a progressive thing and, and you need to grow with it and your supplementation needs to grow with it. Yes, fair enough, but you don't automatically assume more is better, but that's what we do. We do it in every aspect of things. Yep. Well, listen, mate, it's coming up to over an hour now and I don't want to keep you any longer because I know um, you're a busy boy. The, I think the site's brilliant. I think it's a fantastic idea. It's been a long time coming, and it's really important for people who are contemplating using anything like that. So, honestly, get onto this site and have a look at it. It's going to cost you so little, but it can save you so much from a health perspective. So make sure you do. And get in contact with Dave. He's a nice guy. I mean, he might be 26 and a half stone, or 23 and a half stone, sorry. But he's, I'm a little boy now, mate. I'm a yeah. <laughs> he's, he's very thin now. In actual fact, you know what? Very briefly... Well, I spoke to Dave recently about his ketogenic diet and, and give him a few little tips and so on. And um, yeah, for him to say that he's a, he's a light boy at 23 stone six is uh, is still comical for me. But yeah, get in contact with him. Um, I'm going to put links in the show notes to Medicheck, the Truvian man. Is that right? Yeah, for Truvian man. They're on Facebook. Yeah. And uh, Conscious Health. I'll, I'll, I'll dig those out so people can, can check them out as well. Um, Word of Order with Conscious Health is about a four-month waiting list. <laughs> okay. Interesting. <laughs> it's ridiculous trying to get in there. Okay. Well, no, but it's good, though. It's, it means that it's being used and it's being used properly. Um, people want to find out more about you, not just the website. Where else can they can they find you? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> well, obviously, I'm on Facebook as Dave Crossland. Uh, it's one S in Crossland, by the way. Everyone spells it with two. Uh, I am up to my friend limit, but by all means, you can always follow. That is my personal page, and I don't really put much on it drug-related, so you're not going to get anything particularly exciting there. Pictures uh, of I dogs, can't... though, right? Hmm? We get pictures of dogs every so often. You get pictures of me bulldogs and pictures <laughs> of me droids, yeah. Um, then there's Under Construction the Freak, which is another Facebook page, and that follows just me and my training life. So you know, there's comments on there about training and diet and weight and shape and everything else. And then if you do YouTube, you see the freak is uh, my channel of videos. Now, there is progress through my two projects on there, and there are videos on drug profiling and various topics. There's stuff on estrogen management, there's stuff on Easters and half lives, there's stuff on the importance of PCT and the options of blast crews. So there's all quite a few various videos on there. There's a few rants as well about various things that have come up over the years. And, and then obviously I've got the two films, which are available from uh, www.underconstructionthefilm.com. Um, both available on DVD as well now. Film one on digital download is seven ninety nine. Film two is nine ninety nine, and then both DVDs are eleven ninety nine each. Okay. The second one, the first one's all about my fat ass, so don't be expecting anything brilliant. And no, I'm not a bodybuilder, so no, I haven't got a six pack, and I do not look like Phil Heath. Um, the second one goes more into health aspects, drugs in general. We interview a lab owner. Uh, we get a chemist to actually manufacture a test in front of us. We speak to body dysmorphia. We go out to Denmark and look at all the crazy rules and regulations they have over there. And it videos my trip to conscious health when I scare the living shit out of the doctor when she finds out how much I'm using. Um, <laughs> and it, it, it effectively tracks my decline of health, resulting in me sat in, in a hospital bed. So it is a, it is a, a strange watch. Um, it's a very, very revealing watch. I personally can't watch it. Well, you were there, so you it. don't need to. Well, it's not just that. It's very rare you get the opportunity to look back at something you fucked up on in 3D, HD, HD. you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> For everyone to see. I was there. I know what a mess I made of things. I don't <laughs> need to be reminded of it. Do you know what? That would be, um, that would be a, a really good uh, pair of films to get onto Netflix. Because it, they, they're in that kind of genre at the moment. They started looking at these various little niche markets and getting these little things on there. So it'd be really interesting if we somehow... We, we have we have looked at trying to get it to a couple of film festivals. Um, um, unfortunately, James, who I've 
produced the films with, um, is pretty snowed under finalising Anthony Bale's film at the moment. But I think next year we'll probably, because we're going to have a, a, a project meeting in January, because we've been discussing doing some very short investigatory documentaries. Uh, we're very much looking at, instead of producing features, producing things between 7 and 15 minutes. Yeah. Bite sizes that people can download for a very small fee um, uh, that they can watch very, very quickly and not have to sit down. And, you know, we, we, I ran through a list of topics with him and, and some was like, well, well, yeah, but we know that goes on. I said, well, yeah, I know. But let's look at maybe let's look at other things then. So we we might we might do something investigating psychology and and drug usage reasonings and and that sort of thing and 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 other stuff like that. I don't know yet, but we 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 are talking about trying to do some stuff. Yeah. And another good reason to subscribe to the site because all of that stuff will be made aware. They people will know it's happening, so it, it's definitely worth keeping up. Listen, mate, I really appreciate your time today. Pleasure. Thank, thank you so much. Um, we will speak again soon we always do but until then um keep well I let will. me uh, keep me updated with this uh this diet that we're doing at the moment because it's really interesting to see from my perspective how it affects someone like yourself um and uh and i'll speak to you it soon. makes me small that's what it does yeah i know it makes you tiny and um i'm i'm just waiting for you to get back down to the 14 stone um rich <laughs> We'll see. I've got well, a funny feeling my skeleton weighs more than that now. <laughs> it probably does nowadays. <laughs> all right, mate. Listen, all the best, and we'll speak soon. Okay, mate. You take care. Thanks, Dave. Bye.